You and me have known each other for a long time. Hey, you were my best man at my wedding. <laughs> Was, yeah. So uh, you've kept all sorts of fish, but you and I were very, very passionate Central American cichlid keepers for many, many years. And, uh, you know, you'd ran the gamble. You did pretty much everything we could find, you and me and your brother. But uh, your, your passions have changed a little bit, and now uh, I thought we've shown the Corys a few times. Let's take a peek at everything else that you keep and how you're doing. So, you know, I noticed that you've changed your room around a fair bit since last visit. Well, you've probably seen the Kevin Acton video of those beautiful planet tanks. This is my poor facsimile there, um, <laughs> as pathetic as it might look, but I, I like keeping at least one planet tank. And well, you I, don't have CO2. I, uh, I do, it's just not running right now. Yeah. Yeah, it, you don't have those fancy lights. Uh, no, well, that one is good. The rest <laughs> of them are not so much. Yeah. I have one fancy light, which, you know, yeah, suggested by Kevin, but... Um, so what's I'll, all in here? These aren't just regular pet store angels. What are these? Are, uh, these are wild caught Rio nannies, and these guys are the um, Demerlac. Okay. One those angel, yeah. All wild, all wild caught fish. And they got some sort of uh, little pleco right here. Yeah, those are L one hundreds. Oh, it's got beautiful little spots all over it. Is that an ancestress? Yes. Okay. Yes. And I noticed there were some Corys in here, some huge Corys in here. Those are uh, the um, Super Sword side. Okay. And there's also the parents of the Delphax, of the fish that you saw. Yeah, that, uh, that's a Lineage 8, I remember. Yeah, it is a Lineage yeah. 8, yes. And then after that tank... Earlier, earlier I talked about stressing the fish. This is a tank that I stress the fish in. There's not many fish in here now, but I've kept up with 300 Corys in this tank. 300? 300. I'm not going to ask Kevin. Kevin's seen them. It's full. Like, absolutely full. You just add a drip of water afterwards. So there's, there's probably, I'm going to say in here, there's probably 60 Corys inside there hiding in the moss. You know? and These are otherwise all rainbows. I see... Uh, yeah. I, see, I really like rainbows. Yeah, Pseudomagil Gertrude, I see Bozmanny, I believe. And they got that same beautiful one that Kevin Acton had in his tank. Yeah. What's it called? Uh, Kalimatan? Kalitawa. Oh, that's gorgeous with yeah. a red tail. And uh, Amher Gerensis are in there as well. So these are all just yeah. growing up. Yes. So this is my stress tank. Now, last time I was here, this tank, or this tank, I believe, turned sideways, and your big tank, which we're going to look at next, was actually longer, I believe. It was. All right, the big tag's changed again. What's, what's, why is your tag smaller, Dana? Um, I'm going to say due to offshore plywood. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Well, you know, if, if failed. you are the grand master of building plywood yeah. tanks, you are the one that has shown every single person that I know how to build plywood tanks properly. You've always built tanks with integrity, and you build them to last. So if you had a tank fail, and you don't have tanks fail, you had a tank at Bill Bishop's place that was how long was it? It was 1987 it was built, and we took it out of his house last year. Yeah, so you, know, year, you build them to last. Yeah. So this tank now is how many gallons? This is what, this, 10 feet? This uh, this is 8 feet. It's uh, 8 by 4 by 30 inches tall. Okay. Anyway, 460 gallons. Okay, and I see you've got some rainbows in this tank, which is what you had in here before. And I see some uh, Madagascars up front. That looks like Tychochromus grandideri up front. No, yes. uh, Olicanthicus? Uh, Oli yeah, Olicanthicus. Yeah. And then you have a big group of dambas back there, and they're a different damba species than any of the other ones that we've seen before. Like, you used to have Maculatum, you used to have Menorambo, Kinerai. What is this one? This is uh, Paratropolis to me. Okay, this is a pretty obscure one. This is the... Very few people have this fish, correct? I would say so, yeah. Yep. And this is one you just haven't spawned this one yet. This is the only one you haven't spawned. This is the only one I haven't spawned, yeah. yeah they're incredible. I and suspect they're a seasonal spawner. I don't know that, but... Um, Patience, once again. Yep. Madagascar, spawning Madagascar is patience, definitely. Yep. These are all really, truly ancient fish, as I've shown in uh, some of the videos. We did a video, and I'll put a link to it up in the corner, that we talked about this particular tank when it was full of all sorts of other Madagascar species, most of which he's moved on already. They're, they're a chameleon uh, paratropolis. They'll literally turn two completely different colors. They yeah, they're, they're very, the head shape is totally different than all the other species. This is the one I see that one there that's just going behind the wood. It's it's got it's all, this is the one that gets that band, that yellowy yes. orange band. Yes, they yes. turn two completely different colors. It's 
really cool to see. Yeah, you can see it on that one just coming around the front there. It's got kind of a band that goes vertical right through the middle of the body. Okay, a little note about the decor of this tank too. You notice all the rocks scattered around the tank. Each one of these rocks fits in a 10 gallon aquarium. I know because I check every one of them. <laughs> Each one of these rocks is within the arm's length reach of the top of the tank. So when and if the demi spawn, I can pluck it out quickly. Yeah. Because they're guarantee the spawn. This is not yeah. only a cares fish, this is a fish that is almost completely wiped out in the wild. Yeah. And notorious egg eaters when they get stress like when they get any kind of stress. So yeah, every one of those rock round rocks fits in a 10 gallon aquarium. Yeah, you told me you went to the garden center with buckets. I did. Like a weirdo. <laughs> with, bu with two buckets and a 10 gallon aquarium and I checked each rock. Measured every single rock. Yeah, I you did. didn't get any glances yeah. that day. No. <laughs> yeah, the, the, what do you call it? The loader guy was very friendly and helpful. <laughs> So what's the last tank we're looking at here? The last tank is a hodgepodge right now. I'm still trying to consider what to do with this tank. I'm thinking it's going to be an angelfish tank, but we'll see. Um, has one unique thing in it. The metarambo in here, the big one, is a male. It's an F1 fish. But the University of Victoria in BC um, was keeping these, studying them and they, they had spawned them and I got some fish from them so that's now these used to be in this big tank to the, to the did, left yeah. yeah they're out they're out of there right now just so that the me are not bothered because he's fairly aggressive and then at the bottom here like all in amongst all the rocks and stuff that's another ancient species of cichlid isn't it yeah I think so canarensis so etropolis it's an etropolis canarensis yeah. so they're from India I believe yeah, correct the, the one fresh water of all the yeah, total fresh water of all the Species. That's true. Yeah, the other two species are estuarian, so yes. they would need to live in brackish water. Yeah. Like the, the big Suratensis, the big green chromide, is a massive food fish in India, lives in, lives in the estuaries, which are brackish. Yeah. And then the orange one, which everyone thinks is bright orange, it's not, it's brown. It's brown, yeah. Uh, that one actually survives mostly on eating the parasites as a cleaner fish for the green one. And So this one is a true freshwater species. And if you notice the utter absence of plants in the tank, that would be because of the canarensis. <laughs> Well, I remember last the time voracious. I was here, you had them in one of your planted tanks. Yes, they are voracious <laughs> plant eaters. And of course, some gorgeous rainbows. Yeah, This always. is uh, the Lake Katubu rainbow, right? The Lacustris? Lacustris, yeah. yeah. And then those guys are the, uh, I want to say Amaduransis, but I might be mistaken. Oh, there's, that's right. There's some young ones growing up in there of another species that you've acquired. Yeah. Well, the angels have at least left the bottom of the tank. What type of angels are these? Those are, uh, I don't know, we got them from Michael Pham in Edmonton. I'm not sure. Well, they're gorgeous. They're nice and clean, yeah. striped. Yeah, they're, they're destined for the planet tank. They just haven't got there yet. Yeah. <laughs> they, they need to live in the prison for a little they, bit. They do. You gotta stress <laughs> the fish. Like I said, you have to stress the fish. <laughs> Well, my friend, it's always a an absolute pleasure seeing you as the fish room changes. Some stuff stays around for a little while. You're still very much entrenched with Cory's, and you're still very, very much entrenched with the Madagascar stuff, but you're kind of running out of fish. <laughs> Working on it. <laughs> Don't know what the next be, but it's always a pleasure, my friend. Thank you for having us. Thanks, Chris.